Hi, it's Mark Cooper Smith, and it's my pleasure to invite to Zoom my friend and colleague, Omar Romero Hernandez. Hi, Omar. Hey, Mark. What a pleasure to be here today with your students. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, thank you. you know, what we want to do today is um, talk about project management kind of at a, at a high level, which is a topic that Omar has uh, taught and practiced for many years and where he and I have collaborated on a number of different programs uh, at UC Berkeley and with executive programs globally as well. Um, and in particular, for the purpose of this video, what I wanted to do was to take my core curriculum around entrepreneurship, which is a big project, and talk to Omar a little bit about how he might apply, how some tools that he might use to our teams um, with regard to project management. So if you'll give me just a moment, let me set this up from the standpoint of kind of how we look at this. So in my entrepreneurship courses, we start out with a lot of individuals and a lot of ideas. And we start to populate those ideas and say, which are good ideas? And some of the ideas through some processes we go through in class become the ideas, the concepts around which we form project teams. And from there, over the course of the semester, each of these teams takes that core concept, that idea, and they go out and they research the problem that that idea addresses. Is it a compelling problem? They talk to customers, they build prototypes, they understand business models, they look at competitors and markets, they figure out how they go to market, uh, they start to build some financial metrics around it. And through all of this, they're building the different building blocks, the components that come together at the very end in our own demo day presentation or our demo day pitch, which is very similar to what entrepreneurs do when they pitch angel investors or venture capitalists. So all of these different pieces, there's a lot of different components and building blocks come together into a cohesive whole at the end. But getting there is quite a challenge. So this is what I wanted to get some insights from you, Armar, in the way that you teach project management and some of the tools as far as what advice might you give our students as they embark upon this journey. Absolutely. Let me start by telling you that I feel you're teaching some of the most exciting type of projects that we can think of. Why? Because it all may start with just a project idea, a very early idea that eventually you wanna see in big, creating a big impact, either financially, socially, environmentally speaking, you name it. But that, that space between the idea and what you wanna achieve at the end well, all that journey is something where project management can play a role. Why? Because we want to increase the chances that your project idea ends up being successful. So for that, we, we have done a, a lot of things. Uh, I, can sh I'm, I would love to share today a couple of the tools that we teach in our class, ju uh, just to have a sense on how I see that project management can help us do our job better. Yeah. So and, that and, is... As, as you as you think, you know, get ready for that. One of the key things that I do want to make clear is while we're doing this from within the context of how we teach this at UC Berkeley, this same approach, my curriculum is taken very much from the real world and the way startups launch and these tools that you're talking about are just as applicable to real world startups as well. So if you're an entrepreneur launching your own venture, not necessarily in a classroom, these same tools are just as valuable. And I just wanted to reiterate that as well. Absolutely. That's a great point. It, it's, it's something that, that, that really work hand in hand. We teach project management and you provide a background, a context, expertise on a given type of projects that are beautiful. And those are the projects related to entrepreneurship. With that in mind, just uh, I, I just want to share a couple of slides to have a sense of what are the kind of tools that we can work on together. First, as funny as it sounds, one of the common reasons that sometimes project failed, a project might fail because there was no clarity on what you have to achieve or that, or that goal was not clearly communicated. So usually we start by defining through a project charter or a statement of work, what will be the characteristics of the project that we need to make sure that are clearly understood. Now, that's where you provide context information about why how is it that this project started that's where you get a chance to to establish some objectives 
look that we're using the word smart smart that, that, that basically tells you that it's not enough just to pose an objective with a single a simple type of phrase you need to think about how specific that is you need to think if that's something that really you can measure so that at the end you establish if you have been successful or not you need to establish that in such a way that is achievable don't go too crazy smaller chunks are fine that's something that has a person responsible or a group of people responsible for and there's a time frame on it yeah so let me let me reiterate that because i use a, I, I love smart metrics so smart the acronym stands for specific you know really clear what it is measurable achievable so it's not this massive moonshot there's somebody explicitly responsible for that piece and that it's time bound that it's within a specific period of time smart metrics thanks definitely and and it is when we talk about the the actual objectives that many of us by nature as a team we try to expand our boundaries and do as much as we can and so on and guess what sometimes that's a bad idea you don't have to do everything within a project you can have more than one project you can have other teams or so on but what you do need to do, need to establish clearly are the boundaries for that project and that's what we refer to as the scope as well Within the scope, that's where we tell what are we going to be doing as part of the project and what may not be part of our project, at least at this point of time. You pass that to the stakeholders, you pass that to the main sponsor, people involved, and that will clear clarity in terms of how far off you want to go and what exactly you will try to achieve. Yeah, I like that those are the only words in red uh, on your whole page, and that is what it is, but just as important what it is not. Exactly. And there are more things that can be explained within the next slide. Here's the next recommendation that we want to pass to your students. Once you feel there is clarity on your project, think about the three or four things you have to deliver and use that as a reference to decompose your project into smaller chunks. Why do you want to do that? Well, first of all, it's really difficult to articulate a specific total budget or total time for a project uh, because there are many unknowns along the way. So one trick that we follow is that we divide that into smaller chunks. And then for each one of these boxes that you see there, we try to have an idea of what exactly we need to do, how many resources we might need, how long that might take and so on. And little by little, we come up with building blocks that eventually help you represent the entire project. Yeah. So, so in this instance, if you want to take a look at, at a way to kind of break it down, um, you can take a look to start with at the syllabus, because the syllabus for our course has come week by week what the key elements and deliverables are. And there are a number of deliverables along the way, those pieces. Or you might take a look at what that final deliverable is, which is that pitch, that 10, 11, 12 slide pitch and what each of those specific slides needs to contain as part of the cohesive whole. So you've got already a roadmap that has those the, a bit of those boundary lines in there. So go ahead and use that. Absolutely. And keep something in mind. Uh, and I love that, that you use the word roadmap. Your WBS, which by the way, can be done by any collaborative tool, by post-its, sitting down at a table, COVID permitting, having a beer, and then with the other hand drawing, there are many ways to come up with the WBS. As part of that, you will also- and The WDS is your work breakdown structure. Work right? breakdown kind of structure. Different pieces, perfect. Absolutely, that's the way we decompose it. And once you have your different parts, it is a good practice to try to establish clearly the name of those who might be responsible for each part of the project. This is just one of the many tools you can use. It's a racing matrix to indicate who will be responsible, accountable, who might be consulted, and who might be informed about what you do. But in can the you share with us term, just a little bit more about what each of those roles is? And, and you, again, you focused on responsible, but what are the different roles in the racing matrix? Absolutely. And, in, and some of these roles can apply to the same person. You have to define at the end of the day who bears responsibility for completing that task completing that WBS. Who is it that you're going to promote? Or who is it that you're going to cut the head? Oh, we cannot say that on the video. 
we just said, but who will be taking uh, the responsibility on that? Then some other, other areas may receive also co-responsibility or accountability for what happens there, depending on how the project has been established. Let's say that the R might be the leader and the other people are also accountable. There are others who are not responsible, but may have the subject matter expertise about that, and you want to consult with them. And there might be other people who will need to be informed about the outcome or the status of these activities. In a simple term, when we start with this, I always recommend to at least have a letter R to establish who will be responsible for each one. And then as you have more time, you have more knowledge on the area of project management or so on, we can start dealing with the other letters as well. So, so when we have a team project that's um, an entrepreneurial project, perhaps then we would say one person, even though everybody on the team might be out talking to customers, doing customer um, development type of work and discovery work, there'd be one person who's most responsible for summarizing all of that and being able to deliver the weekly reports on that. Yeah. Somebody else that might do the competitor mapping, somebody else that might do the business modeling. Is that right? As opposed to just saying team. That's the way it should go. Exactly. So that if one of these parts is missing, you know who you need to talk to immediately. Perfect. And the other thing for us to remember is that even if, for instance, on the syllabus that Mark was sharing with us before, you, you have an idea of what will happen and you hope it will happen that way. But something we learn in project management is that it never happens that way. And it's entirely okay. One of the many tools you wanna to bring also to the table is at least a conversation, a qualitative map that is nothing but just a list of potential events, internal, external, that you can or cannot control, which may have an impact on the cost, the time, the specifications of what you are delivering. And if you and your team sit now, sit down now and spend 20, 30 minutes, you'll see how quickly you can start coming up with some ideas. You can have a subjective, I admit it, in this first stage, a subjective sense of how likely these events might be, and also a sense of how impactful those events might be to your project. Mm -hmm. Map them out and have a conversation about what do you think will be best to do in case that any of these major events take place. Yeah. Now, now, Omar, I mean, we're doing startups, so we're dealing with the great unknown, right? We're coming up with ideas, we're, we're trying to develop new solutions. So chances are a number of the assumptions, the hypotheses that you have about the problems or the needs, your solutions, how customers will react, how partners will react, will be wrong. Yeah. So you need to really be ready with a plan B. And in particular, when you are wrong, just like my book, right? The other F word, how you put failure to work. When you are wrong, what insights did you get from what you learned along the way that you might use for even a better plan B? So I think this is a really important element, even just from kind of a mindset standpoint, being prepared for things that don't go as according to plan. Exactly. And be open and adapt yourself. Things will happen. That's a guarantee. Yeah. What we don't know exactly is what exactly will happen and when. So Omar, that's fantastic. I mean, those Thanks. are some tools that we can all use. They're pretty straightforward. Thank you for sharing. Omar has, has generously agreed to share those slides with us. So um, if you're taking my course and you're watching this, then in Canvas or B courses, you'll find them in the files section that has resources. Otherwise, you know how to find me and I'm happy to share those as well. Omar, any, any kind of last words as we wrap up this video? Well, just remember that it doesn't matter what you do, at the end of the day, that's probably a project. And the more prepared you are to understand how to plan, articulate and execute project, the higher the chances that your key goals at the end will be accomplished. Yeah. Good luck on that. Yeah, no, I think that's right. And in general, too, kind of in life, as I look back on my career, um, the people who knew how to keep projects on track, who were leaders, teammates, could understand how to operate within a team environment and drive accountability, those are the people that fundamentally, you know, over the long run, end up doing better. So these are really valuable life skills, valuable workplace skills, valuable entrepreneurial skills. Omar, Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you for inviting me.
Bye. All the best.